Let's start by looking at example two. In this example, <clears throat> we are working backwards. So it gives us some information about the hyperbola, specifically the vertices and the foci. And we need to end with an equation. So to do that, we're going to start with the information it gives us and graph this whole hyperbola, everything that we've got. So I have my vertices at negative 6, 0 and positive 6, 0. And I have my foci at 2 square roots of 10 and then negative 2 square roots of 10, which that is about 6-ish, six six, a little more than 6, I believe. So let me look it up real quick. 6.32. There we go. So at 6.32 and negative 6.32, those are our foci. Now, let's list a couple other things we know from this. First off, from these vertices, I know my transverse axis is going to be 6 long. And I know that C is going to be 2 square roots of 10 long. I also know where my transverse axis is. It's right here. So that's going to be at Y equals 0. And I know where my center has to be because it has to be symmetric. So my center has got to be at 0, 0. So we know a lot of stuff just from those two little pieces of information. It looks like we still need to figure out the conjugate axis and the asymptotes. So let's think about how we can find the conjugate axis. We can use something similar we did with ellipses by using our C equation to work backwards. So here's what I mean by that. I know that my C equation is going to be transverse squared plus conjugate squared. And then I can take this and solve for B. So square both sides first. So I get 40 equals 36 plus B squared minus 36 to both sides. So I get 4 equals B squared square root. And I get that B is 2. So my conjugate axis is going to be 2, and it's going to be in the opposite direction. So conjugate axis and conjugate axis. I forgot to actually draw my transverse axis in. And now that I've got that, I can do my guide rectangle. Through the vertices, through the conjugate axis, There's my guide rectangle, so now I can do my asymptotes. Um, and finally, I can write the equation for my asymptotes. So this is going to be y minus k, which is 0, equals my plus or minus, and then I've got rise, so I rise 2 in my guide box, I ran 6 in my guide box, and then x minus h, which is also 0. So if I simplify that, I get y equals plus or minus 1 third, simplify the 2, 6, x. And there's my asymptotes. So now that I actually know all the information I need to, oh, I can actually graph this hyperbola. I have to go through the vertices and follow the asymptotes. Through the vertices, follow the asymptotes, and there's my hyperbolas. So now that I have it graphed, I know everything I've got, I can write the equation. First thing I need to decide with my equation is this x squared first or y squared first. Because my branches go side to side, I know that the x has got to come first. So here's the form of the hyperbola equation. In x and y go h and k. Now x is always side to side, so my side to side length was 6 on either side. y is always up and down, so my up and down length was 2 on either side. So if I simplify this, I've got x squared over 36 minus y squared over 4 equals 1. 
and that is the equation for this hyperbola. So now that we've done one of these on our own, I would like you to try out example four. So same thing, it gives you a couple pieces of information. This one is a little bit different. So let's list what it gives us first. So it looks like this problem gives us our vertices at 5, 0, and negative 5, 0. So 2, 4, 5, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my vertices. And this time it also gives us the equation for our asymptotes. So what I would like you to do is pause the video Knowing what we know thus far, I would like you to complete this hyperbola, fill in the rest of the information, and then come up with an equation for these hyperbolas. When you think you're done, come back to check your work and see how you did. Let's check and see how you did. So first thing, I knew these were my vertices. <clears throat> which told me where my center was right in the middle, and my transverse axis was 5 on each side. Next thing that I did is I needed to figure out my conjugate axis. So here there are a couple ways to do this. How I thought about it is I know that my rise over run has to be 2 over 1. So I rise 2, run 1. Well, I know that I need to run 5. So how much am I going to rise so that I run 5? Well, if I want to run 5, then I'm going to have to rise 10. Rise 10, run 5, 10 over 5 gives me 2. Another way you could think about it is plugging it into your asymptote equation. So I have a transverse axis of 5. So if I plug that in, 2 times 5 gives me 10. So now I had to rise 10 to run 5. But at the end of the day, you're really just looking at the slope of your asymptote equation. So that's how I came up with my conjugate axis length. Then I plugged all that into my C equation to get that, or if you want to write it as a decimal, that. That gave me my whole hyperbola, which I then plugged into my equation. I know it's x squared first because these are side-to-side -side branches simplified to get that. So that is all our application problems for hyperbolas, our working backwards problems. In the next video, we'll do a completing the square with hyperbolas.